Hello everyone, this is Jeff of Tau Flutter Mouse. Today we're going to be shooting some G10 shotgun slugs. G10 or Micarta G10 FR4 Glass Epoxy was developed in the 1950s as an electrical insulator. It has a very high strength to weight ratio. It can be purchased in sheet form, rod form, and also tube form. And then you machine it to whatever dimensions you want it to be. G10 has become kind of popular for use in making knife handle blades and even pistol grips. This time I put some nice big markings on the slugs so when we're watching the high speed footage we might be able to have a better idea of what the slugs are doing in flight. And I want to thank Tim from Tactical G Code for letting us try out these slugs. In the past we have shot oversized slugs like this before made out of glass, aluminum, polycarbonate, and Teflon. But time after time we've seen stability issues. Since we haven't had any success obtaining stabilization with these oversized slugs out of a smoothbore shotgun, what effects will we see if we introduce spin stabilization to the mix? Come on, uh, Len Trexler. Okay, G10, <laughs> whatever you're ready, go for it. Wow, that one went off to the upper right. <laughs> oh. Okay, number three, G10. Maybe this one will work. Probably not. Hey, hey whenever you're ready. In our previous experiments using these large, low-density projectiles, Many viewers believe that adding gyroscopic stabilization would be the solution to all the problems. However, gyroscopic stabilization adds a whole new set of variables, factors, and effects. These effects are present with all rotating projectiles, but they are also predictable and can be compensated for. Because these slugs have such a large surface area and low density, all these effects like spin drift, and the Magnus effect are multiplied many times and exaggerated. The good news is the spin stabilization helped with maintaining the angular momentum of the slug, keeping it flying somewhat straight, but unfortunately the other factors involved completely screwed up the accuracy of these slugs. So you're asking yourself, was it spinning fast enough? So we can actually figure out how fast this slug is rotating. At 1200 frames per second, it takes eight frames for it to make one rotation. In 30 frames, that slug will rotate 3.75 times. Next, we multiply that times 40 to get it back to real time, and it's rotating at 150 rotations per second. So that slug is actually rotating at 9,000 RPM. Supersonic aerodynamics is very complex, but what did we learn today? Well, you want the projectile to be as small as possible, but also as dense as possible. Factors like the shape of the bullet, the balance of the bullet, the amount of drag, all play an important role in whether a projectile will fly straight or not. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.